So 20 years ago, people were trying to celebrate the millennium a year early. Um, and that's another video for number... That's an off by one issue, right? Yeah, that's an off by one error. <laughs> that was not the millennium book. <laughs> so there had been, for about, ooh, probably about 15 years beforehand, people in the computer science trade realised there was a potential problem with the way computer software is written. And they didn't know which bits of software this could affect. They didn't know where this software was running, whether it was controlling critical infrastructure or working out someone's pension results or whatever it could be doing or just sort of an arcade game down the street. But there was a potential that there was a bug in this code. Some people might call it a feature, depending on how you look at it, that could have been catastrophic. I remember people saying, oh, cash machines are going to spew out loads of money and planes are going to fall out of the sky and all this sort of stuff. But it never happened. It was all a big ruse, wasn't it? Uh, no. People saw there was a risk. They then said, well, OK, this could be a potential danger. Let's identify where it's going to hit. Let's fix the problems before it's a potential danger. And so actually what happened on January the 1st, 2000, is that there was a few minor issues. Um, I think HSBC had problems with credit card transactions over that period. Um, there might have been some issues with some wind sensors in airports and things, but there was nothing major that happened. And so most people think it was just a sort of ruse and sort of a fuss over nothing because people had gone and fixed the problem. The heart of the problem with the Millennium Bug comes down to, well, I think there's three things you can look at it. How did people represent data? Um, what assumptions did they make about things having represented data that way? And perhaps the other one that was surprising was the longevity of software. So I think the classic one to think about this is if I write down a day, I'm going to use day, month, year in these examples. So sorry, this is what I'm going to use. So let's suppose we have a person, let's call him Tom, whose birthday is that. How old is he? So 4th of November 19. So I'm saying 1919. He's 100 and maybe about a month old. OK, right. OK, what about someone, let's call her Joan, who was born then. How old are they? 9th of 11th. So, yeah, maybe a little bit younger than him. Yeah, so this person is, let's say, around 100 years old, and this person is about, let's say, about six weeks. This is the root of the problem that was in the Millennium Bug, is that we write down years in an abbreviated form. So rather than writing down, in this case, 1919, and in this case, writing down 2019, we just write down 4, 11, 19 as their date of birth. And so we, and as humans, we can generally work these things out. We can look at the records. If we're looking at a list of people whose pensions we need to pay out, we will assume that they were born and are over 100 and so on. Now, go back in time a bit to when people were writing computer software in the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, and memory at those times was at a premium. Today, we've got machines with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Even something like the Raspberry Pi has up to four gigabytes these days embedded on it. But you go back to the 60s when people started to write software, they only had a few kilobytes. And so one of the things they wanted to do was try and use that memory as wisely as possible. Now, if you're writing software in 1965, so let's just pick a date when people are writing software. So what people said is, OK, we don't need to waste time writing 1919, 1963, 1939, whatever. We could save memory by just storing this as 1963, 39, and so on. So they did. When they wrote that software, that was fine. And they didn't expect this software to still be running 40 years later, probably still running 60 years later now, and so on. So this was a fine optimization to make. What people realize is, well, actually, we're coming up to the point where we're going to go from 1999, which we'd store as 99, to 2000, which we would store as 00, zero and then we'd have 2001, which we'd store as 01, and so on. Now, as we just saw for a human, we've got context about what the data is. We can make an educated guess. So the interesting thing, though, is that is around this point here where we go from storing things as 99 to 00. zero. So up until this point, the numbers are all increasing. So 98 would have been less than 99, which should have been less than 2000. But people didn't know how the computers would react to suddenly going from a number which they assumed would be bigger when they wrote the software 
to one that was significantly lower. I mean, was this all in binary as well? Did it matter? Was it were these abbreviations so this is, this is in question. binary? So I mean, again, this was something else that you had to take into account. Software had been written in a lot of different systems. You had binary coded decibel in use on IBM mainframes and things. You had languages like COBOL in place, which perhaps people didn't know how to program. People just didn't know at the time what the situation was until you actually go and do the research. You look at the software systems that are in critical systems and you say, well, OK, is this going to cause a problem? Uh, and you need to work it out. And if it is, you go and write a fix, which is what they did. And if it isn't, then you've got a problem. Suppose that we're writing software that assumes that we've got two digits that represent the year. So we'd probably write code to print it out. And I'm going to use C as an example. There's printf percent D slash percent D slash 19 percent D and then I'd print day month year. And if that was just an integer variable, then that would print out 1999, fine. But it would print out 2000 as 19100, which you would see instantly was a mistake. But suppose I'd done the same sort of thing and I said, OK, I'm going to store just two dates and I'm only going to use two BCD digits to store it, two binary coded decimal. So I've got 99 and I add 5 to that and that gives me 04. And I then have some software that says, is this less than this? 99 plus 5 should be greater than 99. But because we've wrapped around, it's no longer true. And so you could get interesting issues happen there. And the problem was people just didn't know which bits of software would happen, what would happen if those things wrapped around. I mean, you think about it, if you've got software controlling a, a nuclear reactor that is using sort of this sort of format to store the date and you say, I want to test things every um, 10 days and you say, OK, is current date greater than date of next test and you've wrapped around then you're going to be continuously testing something because the date is greater than what you've currently wrapped around to, which may not be a good thing to do to a nuclear reactor. I'm not saying there's ever any problems with nuclear reactors, but this is the sort of thing that you needed to check. And so people realised this was a problem. I think there was a comment on it in Usenet in 1985, um, and people actually said to the governments, look, we need to look at this. It could potentially be a big problem. Perhaps you wouldn't have had planes falling out the sky, but as the, and the horror movies like to portray it, but it had the potential to cause significant problems. I mean, it's probably more likely you'd get problems that people's pensions were no longer being paid because it decided that they hadn't been born yet and things like that. We talk about it in terms of the year 2000 bug or the millennium bug, but actually you started to see these problems earlier. I mean, someone who was born in 1894, in 1994 would have been 100, um, but could also have been, as we saw there, three months old. And again, you would have started to see problems showing there. So there were signs that this could be a problem. And again, people started to take attempts to correct it. And those attempts could be simple as saying, well, actually, if it's a date after the current date, then we know, but then you get to the point where things, and you have to put assumptions into the assumptions that we make as humans and so on. And of course, it's not a problem that was just limited to the year 2000. There's lots of other instances where it, it has occurred or similar things might occur in the future. I mean, I've, I introduced one myself. I can remember texting a friend saying, I've just reintroduced the year 2000 bug. And so I was working on a BBC micro emulator and I was, wrote some software that counted the number of CPU cycles that executed in a 32-bit integer. And I was surprised that my program kept crashing after about 18 minutes until I worked out that if you've got 2 million cycles every second, after 18 minutes, you would have incremented that counter enough times to overflow a signed 32-bit integer. So I then decided, well, the easiest way to fix this was to convert the value to a 64-bit integer because that would allow the program to run for several, several million years or something. Another classic example was wind, early versions of Windows. Windows NT4 would crash after 49.7 days because they had a counter which counted the number of milliseconds since the machine was switched on and sort of it wrapped around and again you had similar problems happening and things so it's a it's a problem that's shown in multiple places one that's potentially to come is in unix unix stores time as the number of seconds since the first of january 1970 and if as certain unix systems did originally you use a 32-bit value to store that number 
then on, in 2038, that number will wrap around um, back to the beginning of 1970 again. And so that could cause problems. Now, fortunately, people have seen this and most modern versions of Unix and Linux have moved to using 64 bits to represent the time internally. So it won't be a problem again. It'll be sufficiently far in the future that I suspect we won't still be running computer systems running Unix. And if we are, well, we can convert it to 128 bit and recompile the software. So the Millennium Bug, or things very similar to that, are seen in lots of different places. Um, but it, it really did boil down to those three things. It was how we represented data in that the programs had been written to save memory by just using two digits, or to assume that it was started from the beginning of the 1900s. Um, there was the fact that people then made assumptions about how those dates would work, that a a date would always get bigger, it would be monotonically increasing, as we'd say, and wouldn't suddenly wrap around, but then it did. And then there was the fact that software often ends up running for a lot longer than we expect. And so perhaps when we're writing software, we ought to think about the future problems and make sure we sort of code around those assumptions or at least document them and make say, hang on, this will work until 2038 or whenever it might be. This row moves to, so this goes to here, this goes to here, this goes round back to here, and so on. And this moves three, right? Which is another way of saying it moves that way, but you know. So this one goes it back and pass the token on. And I've got it, so I can load the value in, add the value from my register, store it back, and pass the token on. 